Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today we're stitching another design in our pinwheel blocks. It's called Spirals and Pebbling, and it combines my two favorite things in free motion. So let's get on the machine and let me show you what this looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is knock out one of our spirals. We've got four of these in this block and I'm working on this one right here. And I do think that this is definitely necessary to mark just so that you have accurate placement and uh, we'll get that circle nice and round. <laughs> I find that if I don't mark it, I often end up with something a little weird. And particularly in this spot, I really wanted this to be perfect. So, uh, or not perfect, but just look right. So here we go, we're gonna get started stitching around. And here's something I found which was kind of interesting. I like to stitch my circles clockwise, but uh, the spiral is actually working counterclockwise. So it's kind of going to be a funny thing. I'm going to stitch around this in one direction and then I'm going to have to change directions for the spiral. So that's going to be kind of interesting. It's one of those things where one way is sometimes going to feel comfortable to you but you're going to have to be able to stitch in all directions. Okay, so now I'm basically going to turn around and stitch into the spiral and back out again. So I'm carefully trying to stay on the line. Whether this, you know, is for a lesson or this would just be for a quilt that I'm making for myself, I would mark this if I really wanted it to be perfectly placed like this in the block, particularly the circle shape. Uh, it's fine to freehand circles and we're certainly going to do a lot of that today but there's certain times that you really want a perfect shape in and to fit in, a, in an area really nicely. And the best way to do that is to mark it. It's not a cheat and it's not breaking the rules. It's, it's the right thing to do most definitely. Okay, so now we have pebbling. And pebbling is a design that you can totally freehand. You don't have to mark it at all. If this area was really difficult for you to mark, uh, please don't feel pressure to mark it if you're struggling with that. I'm going to stitch a little bit of this on the line uh, just to kind of give you an overview of how we're going to flow through it. Uh, there's a lot of travel stitching involved in pebbling. The next thing I'm going to teach you is a cheat. If you make mistakes, how you can hide it. And then we're going to wiggle over here and stitch some pebbling without any marks at all. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is stitch some on the line and show you how I'm going to knock this out. Basically swinging around and what you might find is if you mark it entirely your lines you know mark lines are kind of wide and you might find that your pebbles aren't connecting you want to make sure that they connect and stack together that's how they you move from pebble to pebble is by stacking them so that the edges touch you really want those edges to touch and so you see like right there those two pebbles they didn't touch that's okay I can work in there and fill it in with some tiny little pebbles that's all right or I could leave it open. It doesn't really matter, but it's one of those things that I kind of get obsessive about. I like my pebbling to be a really solid, dense texture. And that is one of the things. Pebbling is one of those designs that tends to be on art quilts or show quilts. It is. It does tend to get dense. It does tend to make your quilt a little stiffer. So when you choose to place this in a bed quilt, make sure to place it in small sections. You can do a little pocket of pebbling let's say in a flower. Uh, you could do some pebbling uh, in, in you know, the sashing, but do keep in mind it, it does get dense and it is time consuming to stitch this. You can see how I am constantly having to slow down in order to travel stitch and make sure that these are budding up together really nice and evenly. So there's some upsides to pebbling and some downsides. The upside is it's gorgeous. I don't know of any other texture that kind of gives you as much bang for your buck as this. However, the downside is there's a lot of travel stitching, there's a lot of careful stitching uh, involved in it, and it's time consuming. So personally, I would not pick this design to go all over a quilt by any means. I certainly wouldn't pick it to even stitch in the bulk of a quilt. It's just too time consuming for that. But now let me show you a cheat. And um, when I saw my block this morning, I just felt inspired to add a different design to it. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, uh, but I felt like it would be a nice thing to add to this video, and that is the design called Underwater Rocks. It's basically pebbling, it's the exact same design, and it's a way of hiding mistakes. If you can't stitch these together and have them you know, stacking together so perfectly, this is a cheat that will hide those mistakes and allow you to flow through the area a lot faster. 
So I'm gonna basically turn all of this pebbling in this area into underwater rocks. How do I do that? Okay, underwater rocks, all it is, it's the same design, only you stitch sign of some sloppy echoes around it. So I've got this little half circle shape and I'm just gonna stitch inside of it and then stitch around it again, kind of building it up. Now I'm gonna kind of stitch some really sloppy circles right here. See how much faster I'm moving? I turn that one into an uh, underwater rock. I named it underwater rocks because it reminded me of the ripples that you see. If you see rocks underwater, like pebbles and stones underwater, they kind of look that they have that ripply effect from the sunlight coming through the water. That's what I was going for. Notice how much faster I'm moving. I'm not carefully stitching this. I'm just throwing thread on it. And that's a-okay. That's exactly the point. I want you to feel like you understand both sides of pebbling. You understand how pebbling works and stacks together and how the quilt will move. But I also want you to understand that that is not the only way you can achieve a gorgeous, beautiful texture for your quilts. You can achieve it by breaking all the rules and stitching underwater rocks instead. Well, it's not really even breaking the rules. It's just trying out a different design. You can see I'm stitching the circle and I'm just swinging around two or three times. It's a sloppy echo. It's not, you know, it's kind of a cross between echoing and travel stitching, because I'm kind of travel stitching a little bit along the edges of the circle. Ooh, got dents right there. I gotta be careful. Okay. Uh, whenever you get into that center spot, you gotta get in there and gotta get out. Um, but whenever I'm, I'm kind of echoing a little bit and I'm also kind of travel stitching, got a big stitch there that's bothering me so I'm just gonna go back in there and throw some more thread at it I guess I this this uh, this week's mantra will be just throw some thread around <laughs> I kind of like that hear how fast I'm running my machine this is not nitpicky I really hope that you'll go back and watch the beginning of the video when I stitch that spiral really carefully and when I stitch pebbling so carefully and just compare and contrast how much faster this is. I think that you're really going to like it. I really hope that you'll give both versions of the try, design a try. So I'm going to continue to flow through this area, building up more underwater rocks. You can already see the difference in the two textures. This stands out and it's beautiful, but nothing like underwater rocks. This is so much faster to stitch. It's so much more freeing. Okay, so now I'm in the section that is not marked. I'm going to stitch a little pebbling and then I'll turn it into underwater rocks too. I want you to see that you can definitely stitch this freehand into this area. It's not that hard. The thing to keep in mind is always, what is a circle shape? How do these stack together? You're always working to stack them so that the edges match. You can definitely cut the circles in half. You're going to have to. You can definitely travel stitch along the edge and build it up a little bit. But remember, for pebbling, you're aiming for just a kind of circular or oval shape stacked together. You're not going for nearly the amount of uh, density, thread density, that we had with the underwater rocks. So I'm just stacking these together carefully. When I see a little pocket open, if I feel like it, I go in there and knock it out. If I feel like I've messed something up, I just add a little bit more thread to it. I will be honest, when I first started quilting, I could not quilt pebbling for the life of me. It was impossible. Uh, and the reason was, whenever I went to travel stitch into an area, whenever I was kind of connecting the circles together, as I travel stitched around again, my thread would break. As soon as I had maybe two layers of thread on top of one another, the thread would immediately break. It was so obnoxious that I couldn't stand the design. I would stitch anything but pebbling. I would mostly stick with designs like stippling that require very, very little travel stitching. And that got boring really fast and it was really frustrating that I couldn't access those designs that I was seeing on other cultures quilts and I thought it was so beautiful. I love the look of pebbling, but I couldn't stitch it. And it took me a year or two to realize, well, the only difference is I was still quilting with cotton thread. And whenever I made the switch to polyester thread, I'm using Isocord polyester embroidery thread. Whenever I made that switch, I could easily quilt this design. So if you're having thread breaks, if you're struggling with it and feeling like you just can't stitch it on your machine for whatever reason, 
try switching thread. I promise it will make a big difference. So that's it for circles and pebbling in our pinwheel block. And also, I guess I should add underwater rocks as well. I really hope that you enjoy trying these out. Pebbling can feel kind of dense and, and really, I guess, serious and strict because you've got to have everything kind of fitting together, really matchy-matchy and the edges touching and a lot of travel stitching. Underwater rocks feels free and flowing and remember the mantra for this week and that is throw more thread at it. Uh, whatever's happening, throw more thread at it, it's going to look better. Don't worry about density too much with this block. You want your circles to be fairly large and aim for circles that are around a half of an inch or bigger. Especially if you're going to try the underwater rocks because as you add more thread, you're going to get more density uh, and stiffness. So make sure that your starting circles are pretty big. As you add more thread, it's not going to have as much of an effect. And this is why I had those uh, spiral areas, those spiral um, uh, pinwheel areas were left pretty much open. The spirals in there, but pretty much no other quiltings in that spot. So it shouldn't get the block too dense. Uh, of course, stitch this however you want. If you feel like it's going to be too dense for your quilt and you're not going to like it, change it and make it your own. Never hesitate to change a design and make sure that you're going to like it in the end. So my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern and learn how to piece and free mission quilt with us through 42 beautiful quilt blocks. Pick up your pattern at leahday.com. And until next time, let's go quilt.